Hi, today I'll be talking about uh, wheel design and uh, wheel strength. Uh, basically, uh, I'll be answering the questions why some wheels are uh, larger in diameter than the others, like is the case on some bicycles as well as on some motorcycles. For example, rear wheels of motocross motorcycles are often smaller in diameter compared to the front ones. And I will use uh, both bicycles and motorcycles as examples because most of the basics overlap but this is primarily intended for motorcycle wheels. A special cheers to my 667 subscriber uh, Punishers MC from California and uh, now let us begin. Uh, here I draw like a three-year-old. This is a bumpy road where we have a pothole and a bump and we see what happens when a wheel of a relatively small diameter relative to the size of the, the problems comes along. It will get into the pothole and cause a very rough, rough ride and also when it hits the bump it will also bounce and if we have suspension it will have to work very hard and it will make a very harsh ride. But if we use the same size of problems and have a wheel this size, we will not even feel this pothole and this bump will probably be sub uh, completely absorbed by the tires deflection, so no, no work for the suspension to, to do any job. So, uh, larger wheels are better, more comfortable, but, <laughs> right, but uh, uh, why do the kids bikes have smaller wheels? And why don't we see bicycles and motorcycles with a lot larger wheels? They might never need any suspension. Well, of course, there are some limits. Uh, I will also try to, to explain those now. Uh, first limit is the total size of the wheel. Because if you have a wheel that is too large, the handling of the bike will be problematic. And also you will need to make a huge frame to fit those big wheels and for an average size rider it will be a problem. So that's one limit in terms of how, how wide and how, how big a wheel can be. Another limit is wheels strength. Let's take a look at that here in this picture. We have a, this is a cross section of a wheel from the front. This is a bicycle wheel, but the principle is the same. And if we look at the, the cross section, we have the hub and we have the, the rim. Now, if the rim is very, very large, this uh, bracing angle is very steep and it's difficult for that wheel to resist any lateral loads, any sideway forces. So if we make the, the rim smaller in diameter, we get a much better bracing angle. This goes the same for both the uh, spoked wheels as well as for those cast aluminum or magnesium or whatever wheels because we still have uh, need to have some structure and some bracing. Doesn't matter how we execute that. We could of course increase the width of the hub so that with this sized rim we get similar bracing angle to to this size rim. However, we cannot make our bikes infinitely wide because they would be very uncomfortable to, to ride and to handle and everything. So there are constraints when it comes to that. And so another thing that limits us from having very huge wheels is the, the wheels necessary wheel strength to handle the lateral road loads. Of course, bicycles are usually leaned into corners. So there are not uh, the loads that wheels face are more more severe along this axis than laterally so radial loads are a lot greater however uh, la uh, some lateral roads loads still exist and we need to account for that so how do we get uh, around that problem well we could use uh, bigger fatter tires they usually need to be a bit wider in order to be uh, taller because the wheel needs to have that shape that allows us to, to corner and to, to steer the bike from 
uh, leaned to straight and back. So the, that's uh, uh, there. There is a, a possibility to use a thicker tire and get the same wheels diameter as we would have gotten if we used the narrower tire and the larger rim. However, there are some problems with the tire size also, some constraints. If we have a tire that is too narrow, too small, we will uh, have a very harsh ride and uh, if the road is not perfect, even paved roads and especially off-road, we will not get a very good traction. The other extreme is if the tire is too, too big and too, too tall and too wide, it creates problems first of the size, it will also be bigger and needs to fit, but also it will be squishy, tire moves, no matter the pressure it will still be a lot less rigid compared to, to rim. So in, it, in order to keep control and to be able to do precise steering and uh, hold the line, we need the tire to be of not uh, too, too big diameter. And so that's, an, that's another constraint in terms of total wheels diameter, even if we go with a, with a smaller rim in order to get more strength. So those are some trade-offs and some constraints that construct people who design and build bikes and motor, motor bikes have to have in mind and uh, accommodate for. Uh, for another thing is that uh, tire that is very big is usually also very heavy and that increases the total weight and creates all other problems in terms of power, acceleration and uh, also the, the handling, especially at high velocities when the the gyroscopic effect turns in and the thing starts spinning very quickly, so including the wheels. So those are some constraints and the, that's one of the reasons why uh, rear wheels that uh, usually take a lot more load and also take the drive torque are usually built to be a bit wider and uh, smaller in diameter, so stronger wheels with uh, th thicker tires to uh, smooth out any irregularities while front wheels are often using uh, narrower tires and are a bit of a larger diameter because they can afford that, they don't have all those loads, but the narrower tires are more easy to control and uh, helps to have a, a good steering both uh, when riding off-road and when riding uh, on uh, paved roads at, at very high speeds. So those are, those are some constraints. And I will now just briefly tackle the spoked wheels before I make a, a series of videos on lacing patterns and, and building motorcycle spoke wheels. And this story goes for bicycle wheels as well, maybe, maybe on especially for bicycle wheels. In order to solve this problem, some manufacturers will make the hub's diameter larger. And uh, that creates another, so, so instead of having the rim or smaller in diameter to achieve this bracing angle, they will make hub be larger and then achieve the, a similar bracing angle. It, uh, it, it creates a problem for cast wheels because it, it does add more, more weight and there are also trade-offs. But for wheels that are laced with spokes, it's, you don't get all the benefits of larger hub when you're lacing the wheels properly. I will put a link now to my video explaining how bills, wheels with uh, spokes are built and why lacing patterns are what they are. And there, there it's uh, explained why uh, cross lacing provides the best uh, results and the strongest wheel. So if we made the hub flanges larger on the radially laced wheels where the spokes go directly, this one is cross laced, but if the, we spoked it radially and spokes go straight straight up to the to the hub. Then, if we made the flanges thicker, if made the, made this in greater diameter, we would get a better bracing angle. However, on crossed laced wheels, here let's just take a look at this spoke. Ah, uh, sorry about the interruption. Here, let's take a look at this spoke. I hope you can see it. It uh, if it went straight here, we would benefit from having flange with a larger diameter. But it, since it goes, it, it is cross-laced and it goes sideways almost to the 90 degrees, close to it, 
we don't get almost any benefit from having this larger. It will be just move to the side, but not upwards to get a better bracing angle. And uh, I, I'm mentioning this because I hear some manufacturers of, of wheels, especially in the bicycle industry, <laughs> car and motorcycle industry probably have better engineers, but <laughs> in cycling industry, I heard the companies bragging how they made the flanges higher to get better bracing angles and things like that. But in practice, it <laughs> does not make much of a difference, hardly any, because of this uh, phenomena <laughs> because of how wheels are built in order to be strong and durable so and and I'll just briefly mention that radially laced wheels are not very strong so uh, for details see the the other video that will be available if you click in the top right corner and uh, that's about it I've I think I've hit all the high points and uh, it uh, will be sort of an introductory video and I'll make a series of videos on on building uh, motorcycle wheels and lacing them. Principles are all practically the same as for building bicycle wheels. I've already made a series of articles and videos explaining all the basics, but there are some differences, <laughs> catches, gotchas. <laughs> so I'll make sure to also explain and tackle those in the following videos. And that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching and cheers. Thank you.